Welcome viewers, I'm Mamta. Today we'll be doing chapter 3 of class 11, which is the basis of human behavior. Today we'll be covering the topic of evolution and we'll be moving on to the biological basis of behavior. Let's start with the concept of evolution. Now, if you think of our ancestors, how we evolved from the time of chimpanzees, what were the differences that we have been able to come across from that time to now? you will be able to understand the whole process of evolution. Think about Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection. Now, he basically talked about how the survival of the fittest ensures which species is going to continue and what features of behavior, biological as well as emotional, are going to continue in the future. Let's talk about the definition of evolution. Evolution refers to the orderly and gradual biological changes across generations. So when we talk about the changes through which we have come across, the changes we have got from our ancestors, there are basically three major changes. First, there is a straight posture that we have. The chimpanzees used to have a stoop posture, which kept on becoming straight over the generations. So now we have a straight posture. Second is the brain structure as well as the brain size. Now our brain size and the brain structure is much larger than the rest of the body. The body weight and compared to the brain, the brain has a lot of structures within it. So that is one major feature. Along with that, in the brain itself, our cerebrum or the cerebral cortex, the cerebral hemisphere is one of the biggest and the most important ones in humans. In animals, it's very smaller por portion of it, of the brain and less important but for humans it's the most developed and that is why human species are considered to be the most intelligent. Third feature talks about the way we hold things. It's a very pre precise movement that we have and it's not a gross one like animals used to do. That is the use of a refined thumb. That is the third major important feature. That's about the concept of evolution. Now if you think about the nomads, they were basically in the jungles, they were basically in the forest and they were working with whatever was coming across. They started with the stone and the fire. They started adapting to the environment. So now our adaptability has increased from that time onwards to now. Whatever features were important for us based on our survival have been continued in our genetic structures and we have imbibed the best of it all. Let's move on to the second topic which is biological basis of behavior. Now when we talk about the biological basis particularly, we are dealing with the brain, the body and the systems of the body. Now in this particular chapter, we are going to cover two major things. One is the biological aspect of our behavior. The second is a cultural feature. Now you might be thinking that why are we studying biology in psychology? And it's basically not just a part of science, but because psychology is also a science, that's why we are studying the concept of biology in psychology because only when we understand our body can we understand our behavior because the body influences the behavior. So this is the biological basis of behavior in which we are basically trying to understand the concept of neurons in this particular topic. And we'll also be going on to culture a little later which deals with how biology, our genetic basis as well as our environment balances out our behavior. Now, Neurons, when we talk about in biological basis, basically are the nerve cells. They are the specialized nerve cells which are very, very unique and we have around 12 billion nerve cells or neurons in our brain. Now, every neuron is empowered to get information from outside stimuli through the sense organs reaches the brain cell and from that brain cell transmits itself to the rest of the nervous system. It can be to one neuron, the one which is required for that action. It could also be to a number of neurons. And that is like an interconnected network that you have even in your computers, the wires that you have which are interconnected through which the messages transmit. Similarly, the brain has an interconnected set of neurons. Now, every neuron has three major components and it also has electrical activity as well as a chemical activity, which we'll just understand. Now, when any information starts on into a nerve cell, 
So suppose I touch a hot object, that will be a simple reflex action that will not require my brain. But if I have to do a maths problem, in that case I am getting a stimulus from outside. Stimulus has energy, any outside event has energy. That information passes on to the brain and the neuron basically will be starting on with the nerve receptors which are the beginning part of the neuron called the dendrites. These are the tree-like structures which receive the information from the stimulus. Now once they receive the information, it passes on to the soma, which is the cell body. Now this cell body also has the nucleus for processing and synthesizing the protein and the reproduction of the cells. From the soma or the center, the cell of the body, the information passes on to a thread-like structure which is known as the axon. Now this is a rope-like structure. Once the information starts off, it will not stop till the time it has reached its final destination. Either the information will not start, the neurons will not fire, or the nerve potential will not start itself if the stimulus energy is weak. But if the stimulus energy is appropriate and optimal, once the neurons have started firing, it will reach its final destination. So that principle is known as all or none principle. So once neuron starts, it goes on till the end. That is the all or none principle. Now once the information has reached the central part which is known as the axon, the rope-like structure, this information travels through the strength or the length of the axon and reaches towards the end. The end is known as the axon terminal or the axon point, the axon tip and it is also known as the terminal button. Now this terminal button has chemicals stored in it. Once the nerve impulse has the electrical part has reached the terminal buttons, the chemical stored in the terminal button is known as a neurotransmitter. It will be released into a gap. So every neuron has a gap. One neuron ending does not join the other neuron beginning. So the axon point or the terminal button and the dendrite of the other neuron do not join. There is a gap in between which we call as a synaptic cleft. So the functional connection between the two, one neuron ending, the other neuron beginning, is known as a synapse. So here the chemical will be released. This chemical ensures your behavior. If you are over anxious, it's because of this chemical. If you are not really working on something, you are lazy, it's again because of the brain chemical being released in, in this particular synaptic cleft. So this is the whole process of neuron transmission. Okay, now we continue with the next topic, which is about the different kind of nerves which coordinate from the sense organs to the brain functioning. We have two major kinds of nerves, sensory nerves and motor nerves. The sensory nerves basically are known as afferent nerves, A-F-F-E-R-E-N-T. -E -E now, these nerves have a major function of transmitting information from outside environment, taking on through the sense organs route to the brain. So suppose I am writing something or I touch something, the information will travel on from the sense organ, will reach the brain. So sense organ to the brain is known as afferent nerves or sensory nerves. Now after the information has reached the brain, it will be processed. After the processing, there will be an action outside to the stimulus. So this action will be from the motor nerves, the glands and the muscles to the outside environment. Now that is known as efferent nerves, e -double -F -E -R -E -N -T. These nerves ensure that all the decisions are taken appropriately because once the information is taken on from the sense organ, from the outside environment, from the stimuli, that information travels on through the sense organs, reaches the brain, processed. So that is the afferent nerves processed and then a decision taken through the glands and the muscles, there's an outside action. That is known as efferent nerves or the motor nerves, e -double -F -E -R -E -N -T. That's about the nerves. Now we have the concept which is about the brain structure. So this concept talks about the nervous system particularly. Now if you know about our brain, it's a very sophisticated system. It's an automatic system which is working. And also if you look at anybody whose brain has stopped functioning, you can imagine what will happen to that person. If somebody is declared brain dead, it's very difficult to do anything else then. The vital functions of the body are totally collapsing. The person is losing its major, you know, areas of decision making, thinking, reasoning, alertness. So in a way you can say if the brain is functioning well, the whole body is functioning because every system of the body is coordinated through the brain. So that's why this system is very, very important and it's very important also to take care of it. 
so regular diet as well as exercise as well as even you know if you talk about sudoku a mind game a mind puzzle even that research has shown that it continues if you keep on working with your brain in that keep on energizing and exercising with it automatically your brain cells are reviving themselves and such people have been living longer with a healthy brain functioning so the problems of old age are then catered to the p- people do not have amnesia or memory problems people do not have problems where they are not able to understand or do things at the end old stage of their life so brain structure is very very important for us to understand that is the reason why we are trying to know what are the various structures and what are the various functions of the brain and how can that be optimized to the maximum limit now this basically is the beginning point of the nervous system because now we'll be talking about the structure and the function of the nervous system now the nervous system basically has two major parts one part is known as the peripheral nervous system the other part is known as the central nervous system central nervous system again comprises of two major parts the brain and the spinal cord whereas the peripheral nervous system comprises of majorly somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system let's start with the peripheral nervous system now peripheral nervous system basically deals with the major nerves again talking about the nerves in which they are coordinating with all the nerves except that of the brain and the spinal cord now the peripheral nervous system when we talk about the somatic part of it somatic nerves are 31 in number 31 sets having the mixed sensory and motor nerves and similar to that we have the cranial nerves which are 15 in number now these cranial nerves also have the similar function of sensory the sensory neurons the sensory nerves the motor neurons and the mixed neurons now they deal with all the aspects of the nerve system that means transmitting information from the rest of the body when we talk about the somatic nerves the cranial nerves only work with the head region so the information which is sensory or motor is only dealt with by the cranial nerves of the head whereas the somatic nerves deals with all over the body except the brain and the spinal cord now we have the aspect which is known as the autonomic nervous system the second part of peripheral nervous system peripheral if you understand is at the boundary so boundary means all the nerves in the body which transmit information and pass on the information to the brain so when we talk about the autonomic which is a very important part of the brain and that deals with the aspect of involuntary functions all the functions which are life supporting functions like blood pressure heart beat which are functioning on its own if you think about the yogis who used to sit and meditate for so many hours they were able to control their autonomic system they were able to control their automatic functions the basic survival function the vital function of the body like breathing like heart rate like blood circulation so that system calms down when we are relaxed and that is pushed up when we are stressed out so therefore this system has two major parts one is the sympathetic nervous system which is the emergency or the crisis intervention center where it's like you know immediately a, a situation is outside there's a dog which comes when i am driving and i have to apply the brake that is the time when sympathetic nervous system is activated so all the major body parts wherein which have to take an action like muscles are activated all the blood is flowing from the stomach to the muscles and that's why the major organs start functioning actively like the heart starts beating up faster tear glands are activated salivation is inhibited sweating starts off so all these ensure that the action is taken it's a fight or flight reaction you either deal with it confront the hormone here is adrenaline which is released so you fight it out or you f- run away from that situation whereas when the situation is over and the body has to calm down parasympathetic nervous system takes over this system is the relaxing part so resting and digesting part now the stomach function the digestive function can go back to normal the blood is restored back into the stomach now i'll just uh, compare the two system let's look at the screen sympathetic nerves dilates the pupils opposite of that constricts the pupils which is parasympathetic the two work in tandem the two work in balance it's not that one is anti of another the two working balance again inhibiting salivation stimulating saliva opposite again heartbeat function opposite again and stomach function we've already discussed now this is precisely a very important part of the chapter which we have covered today basically dealing with the concept of evolution and moving on from evolution to understand how our neurons work 
and moving on from there about the peripheral nervous system which majorly have the somatic and the autonomic which we just covered in autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and parasympathetic part of the chapter. That's about it for today. Thank you. Thank you.